used Mari before, most of the features covered already may well be familiar to you. In these next few videos, we're going to talk about a brand new feature that I know I've been eagerly waiting for, painting with materials inside of Mari. A material-based workflow means rather than painting all your individual channels one at a time, you can use predefined materials that will give all your image channels data at once. So first up, let's talk about creating materials. I've created a blank project in Mari for this demonstration using all the default options and adding an environment light to better display our shader. The default channels have given me a base color, bump, specular and specular roughness channel. If I open up my node graph palette, you can see I've stripped all the paint nodes and merge nodes Mari created for me, leaving just the channel nodes and their connection to the principal BRDF shader it also made. If I press tab to bring up a node search function and then start to type material, I can now create a material node. When I add that, Mari will ask which type of material I want to create. In this example, I will select principled BRDF, like my shader, but use whatever works best for your workflow. Mari also asks if I wanted to create a shading network for me, which I'm gonna keep unselected for now as I will hook everything up myself. But if you want to, you can leave that on. Now that's been created, we can see it has a lot more outputs than a normal node. Those are all the channels the material can have properties for. We're going to ignore most of them for now as we just want to hook up the four channels in our Mari scene. I'm going to drag off arrows from the materials to the channels, and then from there, I'm gonna further connect it to my shader. It's good to have the channels at the end of your node tree before the shader, so whatever you see is what will be exported. I'm going to view my end shader node by pressing one on my keyboard. Even with that shader connected, we don't yet see anything in our viewport as we need to still define the material. To do that, I'm gonna press control and double click on the material, and that will bring up this little tab next to the node graph palette. Now I can dive into my material. Inside here, we can see we've got a node graph to create a material in. The channels here are the outputs we saw in the material node, so whatever gets plugged in here will be outputted there. So what am I gonna plug into these channels? Well, let's start off with some tiled textures. There are a lot of really great resources online of scan surfaces that will give you multiple channels of material that you can use, or with different pieces of software you can create your own. Or if you wanna skip ahead a few steps, Mari even has some preset materials for you to use, but more on them later. For this demonstration, I'm gonna use a sidewalk material I made a while ago. I've already got the textures in my image manager, so I'm gonna drag them into my material graph. I have a base color, spec roughness, and height, which I will use as my bump. Once those are all hooked up, I need to do something about my specular channel. Since we set that up in our node graph earlier, it will be best to have some data for it to pick up. Well, since this material graph is just like our node graph, I can pop down any node I can there. So let's throw down a color node and plug that in. For now, I'm gonna set it to mid gray. So that's a basic material created, but the fun doesn't stop there. It's pretty obvious the scale isn't right, so how can we set that? Well, since when we dropped in the tiled textures earlier, it made a tiled node, we can just set the tile rate in there like we've done before. But that would mean jumping into the material graph every time that we wanted to make a small tweak or fix. Murray's materials, however, let us promote variables from inside to avoid this, so let's do that now. You can promote an attribute by clicking the spanner icon next to any setting or from outside the material graph in the node properties palette, you can do it by pressing the little P icon in the top right. From there, I will press pick and then open up all the tiled nodes. Inside of there, I can use control and click to select all of the U and V repeats for the tiles. Now they've been added, I can see them on the right in the node properties palette. So I now have those four separate sliders, but that's a bit cumbersome. So I'm going to link them all by selecting them and then hitting the link button. I will call this tile amount and then hit okay. Now if I go over to my node properties and drag that slider, it will change the tiling for all the textures at once. I'm gonna also go back into the menu and pick the color that we added into our specular channel. This way I can control that on the fly too. As I'm sure you can see by now, this is a really powerful workflow and lets you achieve some things in Mari that can really help speed you up. If you wanna save a material, you can go down to the node properties of the material, hit the node tab, and export that material to somewhere on disk, but more on that in the video on ingesting materials. I'm gonna wrap this video up here, but join me in the next one to learn about merging materials and masking them to certain areas of your mesh. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you there.